Hi, Tom Warrender here from Classroom Medics. We're down at Aldersley Stadium in Wolverhampton today and we're going to do a very special sports science test. This test is called the Running Based Anaerobic Sprint Test. Now this test is going to look at my body's ability to generate anaerobic power. Okay, it's also going to look at my body's ability to maintain that anaerobic power. Now some of you might be wondering, what's anaerobic power? We'll look at that in more detail in the results section. But to put it very bluntly, anaerobic power is used when you do very short, sharp, intense periods of activity. For example, sprinting 100 metres. The opposite of anaerobic power is aerobic power. Now this is used when you do longer durations of exercise, let's say going for a run for half an hour. Okay? Now it's really easy to know when, you, when you're working anaerobically because your body produces something you should have heard of which is called lactic acid. Now lactic acid is the chemical that your body produces and it makes your muscles feel like they're burning during exercise. Okay? So if you get that kind of sensation you know you're working anaerobically. All the test involves is you sprinting 35 metres a total of six times. Okay? Now in between each sprint you're allowed a 10 second rest. So you need someone timing how long it takes you to sprint the 35 metres and also to give you a heads up on when your 10 second rest is over. You need to log your results and then we're going to show you what to do with your times in the results section. So when you're doing your timing you're going to be using a handheld stopwatch. This means you need to stand in a position where you can see your athlete crossing the line at either end. Okay, so you don't want to stand at one end and guess when they're crossing the line at the other. We don't have to worry about this because we're using electronic timing gates, which are these devices on the tripods next to the hurdles. So as we cross the line like this, it starts the timer like this, and it will record the time to one thousandth of a second accuracy. And this is far better than handheld timing because it doesn't rely on human error. Right, I'm all warmed up, ready to go. I can tell you I'm not looking forward to this test. I'm a bit more of an endurance athlete, so my sprinting capabilities are pretty poor. I'm not looking forward to the lactic acid at the end, but it's all in the name of science. Make me go a little bit faster. Remember the go faster sunglasses, and we'll see what happens. Okay, just, just complete the test. That's hard. You get to about the, the end of the third one, you start getting a bit jelly-legged. End of the fourth one, you're thinking, oh man, my legs burning. The fifth and sixth one, you just got to dig in and try and go as fast as you can. But I pretty much gave up on that last one, which is really bad. But what can you do? Right, I'm gonna try and get this lactic acid out of my legs. You can see I can't even speak now. So, you've been warned, if you do this test, be prepared for some lactic acid. Okay, we're going back to the lab and look at the results. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I'm just warming down and I had a quick thought about how do we make this test a fair test if we were to do this again in 12 weeks time. Now, I mentioned very briefly about human error when recording the times, okay? That's one variable, okay? That could affect the outcome of the test. Now, we had very accurate timing with our timing gates down to one thousandth of a second. There was no human error, so it's completely accurate, okay? Now, I want you to have a think about the test and what other factors could affect the fairness of the test, okay? There are lots and lots of variables. I'm going to put another video up later on about what the variables are. But before you watch that, have a think and create a list about what kind of variables could impact on the fairness of the test.